So these are the notes for uh, 2.3, where we're going to talk about other types of graphs. You know, we did a histogram, frequency polygon, an OGIV graph, and we also did those as relative frequencies, where you do the percent, essentially, um, of the whole. Uh, these are some other graphs. A lot of these are categorical. They don't have the ability to be presented as histograms because we're not doing a numeric value uh, for the class. We're doing maybe a, uh, a again, a classification that's not numeric, like auto or how people are going to get to work. So we can do a, a traditional bar graph. We can do a horizontal bar graph like this. Or we could do it vertically where it's standing up. Um, it's just a question of how you want to present the data. So again, this is a horizontal bar graph versus a vertical bar graph. Notice there are gaps between each of the bars. They don't smash up against each other like a histogram does. And it's not a scale that slides. We still have our frequency and we still plot. Um, those numbers to and, and label things so that people can get it. The second type of graph, it looks a lot like a bar graph. It is a vertical bar graph, but it's a specific style of uh, vertical bar graph. It's called a Pareto graph or Pareto chart. And when we do these, we want to go from the highest amount down to the lowest amount. We always organize it from greatest to least, and we're going to slam them up against each other to make a nice continuous um, graph. So a little bit different than a vertical uh, bar graph. Uh, it's a vertical bar graph that's been smashed together and that is from least to greatest. Um, you don't have to have, like up here, this happened to be uh, from least to greatest from the top down. This did not have to be organized in a special way for a regular um, bar graph, but for it to be a Pareto, it does need to be organized. The next graph we have is what's called a time series graph. A time series graph is really good at plotting something that changes over time. And we're just really taking the same measurement over and over again and seeing, again, like temperature at 12 o'clock, it was a certain temperature. And then as the day went on, the temperature changed throughout the day. And so we'd calculate, we'd measure those times, those changes, and then we just connect the dots. Uh, notice this doesn't go down to the x-axis unless the temperature was zero. It wouldn't touch that. Uh, same thing over here. We just kind of leave it, uh, wherever, it was, wherever it left off. The next one, and I know you guys have seen these before, is a pie graph or a pie chart. Um, they're divided into sections according to percentages of frequency. So this is great for comparing a part to the whole. The first thing you have to do is figure out actually what the percentage is in each. And so this piece right here, the frequency, which is the number of yeses for that category. So I'm asking people who are married, and I ask uh, 200 people, people were surveyed, um, and I look at how many said married, and they, there were 100 that said they were married. To first find out the percentage, I would take 100 divided by 200, and that would give me 0 0.50. That's where the 50% is coming from, okay? But I also want to know how much of the circle, like what is the angle that I need to use to represent that section? Now when it's 50%, you guys say it's half a circle. But if I want any of these, the 5% or the 27%, to have the appropriate sized angle, what I need to do is take this decimal version of the percentage and times it by 360. That will give me 180 degrees. You should do that same calculation for all of these. First calculate the percentage. Get your percentages calculated by taking the frequency divided by the whole, and then once you know that percentage, then you can times that by, by 360 to get your sector. I don't need you to draw a perfect angle here because I'm not going to give you a protractor to go through that process. But I am going to ask that you draw something relatively close and that you tell me what the angle is. Okay, I don't just want to know it's 50%. Somewhere off on the side you should write 180 degrees so that we know how big each of these sections is. Okay. Uh, the last type is what's called a stem and leaf plot. It's kind of a combination of a histogram and um, uh, frequency distribution where you build a table. And the way this is going to work, when we do um, this specific example, we're doing cardiograms um, performed for a day for 20 days. I'm going to put the tens over here in my stem, and I'll put the ones over here in my leaf. Now, if there's two digit or three digit numbers, I might do the hundreds and the tens and do ones on the side. I could do the hundreds on the left, the tens and the ones on the on the right. It, it's just a question of um, what the right setup is here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my lowest number, which is 2. 
So I would start at 0, 1, 2, and I go all the way up to my biggest number is 5. I think it's 57 specifically. So then 3, 4, 5. Now off of each of these stems, I'm going to put in the leaves like 2. So I know that this represents 0, 2. The next digit I'm looking at is 14 and 13. Now I want to put these in order if I can, so I'm going to do the 3, comma 4. So this tells me I'm representing a 1, 3 and a 1, 4. That'd be a 13 and a 14. If I go to the 2's, I got a 25, a 20, and a 23. So that would be a 0, a 3, and a 5. Get rid of those. You don't ever want to get lost in all these numbers. You want to be able to get rid of them as you go. But I'm in the 30s. I've got a 31, 132, 232s, 332s, 432s, 432s. So I would write the number 2 four times. This is a way for me to be able to see all the data in a compact form, organized form. This isn't just a random set of numbers. 33. You know, I'm getting my numbers organized. I know they're in groups. I can tell that this group of the 30s is a pretty big group. Okay, and then I can come to my 40s. I've got a 43, a couple of 44s, and a 45. See, it's a 43, 44, 44, 45. Gives me a 51, 57, and 52. So one. Two, seven. But you can tell this is our big list. You can kind of turn your head to the side and see sort of like a bar graph. Uh, but the difference between this and like a bar graph or a histogram is I actually know the individual values in, in each column, okay, or each row. I'm not, so nothing's being hidden from me. All right, well, hopefully that helps you and you can get through the homework this way. Uh, short video, but uh, good luck and we'll see you in class.